driveway. You'll you'll see it. Yeah, officer, don't worry. I'll ride in the back. I can handle it. Thanks. Crazy to think about y'all finding ISIS right here in our own backyard. Well, you'd be surprised the kinds of places you'll find terrorist activity. Isolated rural areas can give shelter to extremists. Take the Klan, for example. <laughs> I almost wanted to say, but I held my tongue. Come on, Milton. A police department in rural Texas? Who knows how many of the officers out here are still in the Klan? Just so strange to think. Out here in the hill country of all places. Them terrorists managing to assemble some kind of radiation bomb. Makes you wonder about their logistics, I'm sure, from a counterintelligence perspective. <laughs> right. Uh, somehow they must have secured radioactive material, detonators, some kind of explosive media. We picked up on their plan when... Well, I'm not at liberty to discuss it. Probably some kind of internet thing, right? Sort of like y'all were working on in that uh, fancy computer lab. Uh, essentially. I didn't expect this officer to understand. He seemed like the sort of person who probably still uses AOL. What gets me about it is that it happened in Topaz Heights, of all places. What are you getting at? Well, largest piece of property out there is Henderson Peach Farms. Then there's the Parker Ranch. Everything else has been subdivided. Reckon it'd be hard to get much more than a couple acres. Imagine if you were going to be planning some kind of terrorist attack, you'd need somewhere to train and you might want some privacy. Seems you wouldn't get that kind of thing out of Topaz Heights. You pick somewhere where you have easier access to land. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Grace, but if I remember right, it's pretty hard to find a place in that neighborhood where you can't see right into your neighbor's property. Keep it cool, Milton. You're prepared for this. We believe they trained on a ranch in New Mexico. This was just a way station operated so that they could prepare the bomb and load up before the attack. Huh. Well, when you put it that way, it seems like they should have picked somewhere less, I don't know, out of the way. Well, these are interesting observations. Uh, have you considered a career in intelligence? Well, I don't know about that. Hey, I meant to ask you, how was the soccer game, Grace? Oh. It was good. Your kids are in soccer? Oh, my niece plays. I drive her to practice. All right. You feeling okay, Grace? I just got a headache. I'm starting to feel like a migraine. I'm not sure. Uh, do you need an ibuprofen? Yeah, sure. Couldn't hurt. D don't worry. It's not one of our mind control pills. I left all those at home. I <clears throat> uh, mean that in jest, of course. Is that the field hospital up ahead? Yep. Are we thinking... thinking there's gonna be any casualties from this? I'm, uh... trying to prepare myself for that possibility. But I can't say for sure. Thank God that bomb never reached San Antonio, huh? Indeed. Here, slow down. I need to show my ID. Timmy Vilgiotti presents Rivers of the Mind. Season 2.5, starring Michelle Pearl as Grace, Colin Estes as Agent Carter, Isiama West as Dr. Whitebaugh, Timmy Vilgiotti as Philip, and C.J. Hackett as Ryan. Now please enjoy Rivers of the Mind, Season 2.5, Episode 3, Disinformation. As Agent Carter hurried down to the tent, Grace pulled me back briefly. Something's not right here. You're telling me. That squirrely son of a bitch was lying right through his goddamn teeth. Wait. Wait, do you see that? See what? I thought I saw... Oh, never mind. It's the migraine. Let's go. Something was off about that police officer... Philip, I think his name was. Every so often during our conversation, I felt some piece of my mind slipping out of place. I felt destabilized. He seemed to know more than he let on. Almost seemed like he could have been some kind of very well-trained foreign agent putting on a southern accent working to infiltrate our perimeter. I needed to keep an eye on him, feed him more false information to see if his handlers put it out through their surrogate. The so-called Dean Heyerdahl with his so-called 
blog about this so-called alien conspiracy. I walked in through the front of the tent, hoping the others would catch up. A handful of people had already been cleared to leave, given the designated cover story. I saw Dr. Whitebalm standing next to the entryway to the triage area, taking notes on a clipboard. How are things looking? Any updates? We've got six or seven so far exposed to the levels above the threshold. Most of them were standing right below the anomaly when it occurred. One seems to have escaped one of the houses that fell into the sinkhole. Another may have been drinking tap water from an irradiated pipe right as the energy contacted the metal. But so far, no serious health complications. You've just got Megan Quartz, I believe her name is, with some faint bruises, then the owner of the Parker Ranch with a broken hip, and last, an unidentified man, probably a vagrant, who is evidently in some kind of coma. Both Megan and the vagrant are registering significant exposure levels. How did things go with the locals? Well, I've got two of them helping with security. Uh, should be here soon. Yeah, there they are. Uh, Philip, Grace, come here. This is Dr. Whitebalm. Pleasure to meet you. Howdy, Doc. Shook my hand and then, then started staring at me. Her pupils dilated and shrunk as she studied me, fascinated. A sense of dread came over me. I was her experiment, wasn't I? So were all these people. How are you feeling, both of you? She tried to pretend that she meant both of us, but kept looking at me off and on out of the corner of her eyes. Shocked. Truly shocked. So, Daka, what's your capacity here? Well, I'm... Dr. Whitebaum works at our data collection center. Her background is in physics. She's here to help advise on the question of radiation. Radiation, huh? If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Well, what kind of radiation are we dealing with, Doctor? It's difficult to explain to lay people, but... I'm sure Dr. Whitebaum can explain it to you later. We need to get going on security. Right. I'd be happy to discuss it with you later. Agent Carter positioned us strategically on patrol around the south and east sides of the tent, looking out for any curiosity seekers, all of us told to make sure no one went past a radiation warning sign. That meant, essentially, that I was supposed to look at some trees for the rest of the afternoon and try to look busy. I expected it to have been boring. It should have been boring. Maybe five minutes passed until I saw someone in the woods. It was him, face-melting, eyes on the brink of rolling from their sockets, gray hoodie stained with blood and grime. Hey! You! Stop right there! He stared at me. He didn't raise his hands, it didn't come any closer, just stared. Who are you? No answer. He looked ambivalent to my presence. His eyes were vacant like he could see right through me. He was looking at the tent. Freeze! Don't come any closer! His voice. Don't make me shoot! His voice, I could hear it, but his mouth wasn't moving. <laughs> Agent Carter positioned us strategically on patrol around the south and east sides of the tent. He... He already... Someone... Someone just went past the sign, didn't they? No, this had already happened. He he got past me. I looked back over my shoulder, back towards the tent. No sight of him. My head hurt like crazy. I kept watching the trees. I thought, I thought I saw people in them, flickers of shadow. But I couldn't tell if it was, if it was real or if it was just the migraine. Footsteps, coming down the hill. <sighs> just Agent Carter. How's it going? Anyone try to get through? None yet. Well, thank you for your patience. We should be starting with the press conference soon, and then you'll be free to go. Thanks for letting me know. How's that ibuprofen working for you? That's feeling a little better, but it still hurts. Christ, what a day. Hey, you're telling me. Say, listen, you told me Monday you were Navy, right? Yep. What's your security clearance, if you don't mind me asking? Yes. 
Why? Well, I didn't want to fill your partner in on this since he seems like a bit of a cowboy type. Maybe a little slow. Uh, I might be reading him wrong, so forgive me if I sound rude. I just don't know how much I trust him with classified intelligence. But there is something I need to explain to you about all this. All right. There was no dirty bomb. We'd received tips for months about an ISIS sleeper cell in the area, but it was actually just a pair of brothers from Pakistan who moved out here to try to work on some sort of web startup. We needed a cover story since the actual cause of the explosion was... Well, you, uh, you might find this hard to believe. I tried to think of something. What could I tell her? What might she believe and be willing to spill to her partner? Uh, blast from an unknown weapon. We believe it to be an experimental weapon designed by either the Russians or the Chinese. What kind of weapon? Well, we aren't sure. We think it might have been a railgun of some kind. Interesting. The railgun did all this? Yeah, it's very powerful. Uh, far from what we thought was technologically feasible. You considered it might be aliens? Well, I... Maybe she was in on it, too connected with this Dean Hiredall character. Or maybe she herself was Hiredall. I'd know once I checked his blog the next morning. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm joking. R right. So what's with the hospital? Uh, uh, radiation levels spiked after the weapon was fired. Well, Thank you for filling me in. Oh, of course. I could see the sinkhole from the hill where I was standing. The sun was growing darker already as the crowd gathered for the press brief. Once I was alone, I took out my phone to read Dusty's texts. Thanks again for your help. Keep me posted. I'm thinking we should be online before midnight. It's been an interesting afternoon. We'll have a lot to talk about. Let me know when you have time tomorrow. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. You come down to talk to me about that, uh, radiation? Radiation isn't the right word for it. Here, let's go down the hill. Who are you? Dr. Whitebomb. You're the one who, who did this to me? I... She looked over her shoulder. I'm not sure what you mean. It's a substance or phenomenon that we've called Gamma Triple Prime. If I'm not mistaken, it seems as though you've been exposed to quite a lot of it, although I'm not sure how. Have you... Have you noticed anything odd in the past few hours or days? Odd colors? Any glowing from cell phones? That sort of thing? No. Why, am I supposed to? Right, of course not. Maybe it's different for you. Maybe what's different for me? Suddenly, I started to feel very afraid. Very afraid. I felt like I was about to fall down the hill. My ears rang. For a moment, I felt like I was on the verge of losing my mind. I... You... You... I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. Nothing made sense. I couldn't think. My vision was blurred, staggering between frequencies. She started panting, her eyes growing wide. She sat down against the hill. I let her go, trying to calm myself don't down. don't lie to me. What did you do to me? What? What did you do to me? Seems like something you should have to answer for, seeing as it happened to me outside of that underground lab of yours. What? exactly do you mean? When did this happen? Tell me more. Monday night. Monday night. Not Sunday. Monday. You just experimenting on so many folks you're just getting them mixed up or what? It wasn't my experiment. I just helped build the... It's extremely difficult to explain to lay people. Really? We'll try all right, how familiar are you with Einstein's field equations? Einstein's, uh, um, 
I am... I'm not uh, familiar with... But you've heard of the idea of a wormhole. Yes, yes, I, I have heard wormhole, yes. Right, right. Well, it's theoretically possible, right, if we solve the Einstein field equation with a Jacobian matrix and a specific determinant. Theoretically, a Schwarzschild black hole will have a corresponding white hole, resulting in what we call an Einstein-Rosen bridge. In 1973, Homer Ellis demonstrated in the Journal of Mathematical Physics that... I'm afraid that I, uh... I did not do especially well in physics class, so... Right. So, like I said, it is difficult to explain to lay people. Essentially, there are lots of particles and magnets and light and some picoscale nuclear fusion and boom, wormhole. That's the idea. So you, you what? You, you shot me through a wormhole? <laughs> if only. That's, that's the hope someday, not you specifically. I'd be happy to shoot anyone through a wormhole. Not to kill them, of course. We could visit Mars like that, is what I mean. So far, the best we can do is send a 100 gram lead weight to Boston, Massachusetts. So, what did you do to me? I didn't do anything if this goes back to the sixth. That was my colleague, Dr. Martin James, and he died in the explosion. That accident changed me too is what I've been trying to tell you. You must have been affected by a small anomaly that happened the following night, a kind of aftershock. No, no, no. You're, you're lying to me. Officer, I have no reason to lie to you. Please, if you come in with us, I can make up something very convincing to explain and we can try to understand what- I'm not coming with you. Right. That's understandable, just- Know that what happened to you did not happen intentionally. It was an accident, and I can help you if you need anything. I'll leave you my business card. If you email me, just make sure you say you're a former student or something. Just then, there was a bright flash of light, blinding light, a brilliant white light that blocked out everything else in the world. I couldn't even see my own eyelids. I staggered to keep balance. When I opened my eyes, Dr. Whitebaum had already reached the top of the hill. She watched me with pity, almost amusement, until her image started to blur, and she vanished. The side of the tent rippled as she walked back inside. Just like that. One moment she was there, and then, then she just disappeared. Just like that. I know it sounds crazy, but it really happened. I believe... I believe you. She said they were trying to make a wormhole, huh? Yeah, that, that's what she said. That... that doesn't make any sense. Why? Agent Carter. Agent Carter came up to me while I was patrolling in the forest. He told me... He told me that the government cover story was fake, like that doctor told you, but... He didn't say it was because of some... Some wormhole. He said some... Some foreign adversary hit us with a railgun or something. So they're feeding us different stories. I wonder why. One of them has to be telling the truth, right? They can't both be lying. You said... You said the doctor. She produced a giant flash of light, and then she... She turned invisible, didn't you? She sounded like she knew something had happened to you, too. Who's to say that doctor was even human? She, she could have been an alien. She could have been trying to fool me with some advanced technology of some kind. You're right. God, I feel like I'm going insane if I think you're right, but you're right. Even if she's not an alien, who knows? I, I saw something, Philip. It sounds crazy, but... Stop the car. Did you say something? That voice. Well, that voice, I, I heard it That's before. right, Grace. 
Now stop the car. Dude. S -s Slow down. Slow down. Out of the car. What? What are you? The people in front of us got out of their cars, shaking. I heard folks in the distance screaming for help. We did as we were told. Good. Waiting in the distant, burning forest was a crowd of translucent people with glowing eyes. From behind them came, came screams of agony. I reached for my gun. I wouldn't do that if I were you. This is the fast way. I can make this go much, much slower if you try to. Man, who I could now see to be, to be some kind of, kind of teenager, froze still, his eye dislodged from its socket and floated out towards me, and I watched it drift silently through the air like a blimp. I kept the gun pointed at him. Shoot, Philip! Just shoot! It happened just like that. One moment she was there, and and then the next. Stop. Huh? This isn't real. What do you, What do you mean it's not real? What are you talking about, Grace? No, no, it's happening again. It's happening again. Where is he? Where is he? Who? Did, did you see him? Did you see the alien? No! No! Not an alien! Oh my god, I'm, I'm forgetting it again. Already. God damn it, I need, shh, I need to write it down. I need to write it down. Hey folks, and now that you've listened to Disinformation, I'm going to read you this information. <laughs> Rivers of the Mind is an audio drama written and produced by Timmy Vilgiotti. It features the voices of Michelle Pearl as Grace, Colin Estes as Agent Carter, Isiyama West as Dr. Whitebomb, CJ Hackett as Ryan, and me as Philip. All of the birds were recruited as on-site extras, and if you'd like to check out their native habitats, you can swing by the UCCS Heller Center or the Big Park by the radio antenna next to Mountain Mamas off of Uinta. If you liked this show, consider supporting our Patreon at patreon.com slash Timmy Vilgiati, V-I-L-G-I-A-T-E. By the time you're hearing this, I will be in Brazil, getting ready to go to a conference. And any of your support will not only help me support the show, but also excavate myself from the mountains of debt that I have accumulated. Also, last but not least, consider leaving us a review, even if you didn't like the show, or you just thought it was like, okay, not good, not bad, okay. I'd love to hear your thoughts, ideas, or questions about the show. If you feel more comfortable writing to my email, you can always email me at v as in victor arts at gmail.com that's v as in victor arts at gmail.com i am not super great at checking that email but i will check that email after this episode is released because i'm publicizing it thanks folks have a great day até semana próxima bye